Today I want to talk to you about getting the right puppy for your household. As a dog trainer, I hold the puppy kindergarten classes and as an animal behaviorist, I go to houses when problems occur. There are many times when people arrive at my puppy training and I look at them and I look at the puppy and I really wonder why on earth they got that particular dog. In fact, I'm almost sure that so many of the dogs that land up back in rescue or in uh, being rehomed are for the very reason that they are the wrong dog for that family. So let's think about it, what you should do before getting a puppy. You've made the decision you want a puppy or your children have asked you for a puppy. You need to think about your situation first and foremost. Number one, what is the size of your garden? Is it small? Is it big? Now, these days we have high density living. So many properties have a tiny garden and many of these properties are within a cluster where there's a body corporate and you need to abide by rules. Now these rules will probably state small garden, small dog. Yet it is the very small dogs that ca cause all the problems because they are barkers. Dachshunds, Maltese, um, all these little dogs are barkers and Jack Russells. And with the complaints come in from the neighbors, your dogs are barking. So, in fact, for a small property, you need to get the quieter breeds, and there are some small dogs that are quieter, but you also sometimes find that the large breeds, and I'm talking about Newfoundland, St. Bernard, Irish Wolfhound, yes, don't laugh, these are big breeds, but they're also quite lazy. So you give them a nice walk, they come home, and they sleep. No noise, no barking. So if people say to me, I need a dog for a small property, I often mention these large breeds. Sadly, they're not allowed to have them in these complexes because there's a height limit. And that is why there's so many problems in these complexes with barking dogs. The dogs I feel very sorry for are Jack Russells because these are very active dogs. They get put into small homes and they go mad. These Jackies should be running in a nice big property or even on a farm. But they're not. They're stuck in a small property and sometimes never, nothing's ever done with them, so they become a problem. The other thing you have to look at with getting a puppy is your own circumstances. Will the puppy be left on its own all day? How long are you leaving it all day? Will you be doing something with it when you do return home? Will you be walking it? Will you be training that dog? There's so many variables when getting a puppy. And the biggest problem about you people buying puppies uh, when you are away all day is going for this two dog syndrome. I'm going to get two because then they can keep each other company when I'm away at work all day. And I talked about that in a previous video. So, will your puppy be able to cope? And even two puppies sometimes don't cope when their owners are out all day. Not a good thing if you are out for many, many hours, nobody's at home, not even two puppies are going to be a good thing to have. So your circumstances. Then you've got to look long term. There's a lot of expenses involved in getting a puppy. The main one is you're going to have to feed it, do the inoculations, and if you really want to get a good dog, you are going to have to do some training. This all costs money. Are you prepared to put that commitment and money into this puppy? So there are many things that you should start thinking about before you get a puppy and really think about it. Pros and cons. Can we get the puppy or should we not get the puppy? The other commitment and things that people should think about is children. 
I am very wary about getting puppies around children that are under five years of age. They actually cannot cope with a small puppy. The biting. They run, puppies run, grab them, bite them. We have tears with the children. And sadly, we get a lot of people who say, oh, I'm going to get a puppy for the children. Mm, the children might like it when it first comes, but very soon there are tears because the puppy is just not what that child wants. I believe that unless there's an existing dog in the household, you shouldn't rush out and get a puppy for the children. You also land up with the parents having to now look after the puppy because the children can't actually cope with it. Children under five, even six, seven, cannot be given the responsibility of looking after a puppy. It is not possible. These children will forget to feed it or forget to give it water and even get bored with it. They'd much rather be playing with their own things. And then it's up to the parents to do all that uh, is necessary for that puppy. And in many cases, the parents are stressed. They've got these children whining and wanting to do things. They've got the puppy who's chewing and biting. And in the end, many of these dogs are rehomed for the very fact that the people can't cope. I've just been helping a, a breeder who's having to take back a puppy, one of her puppies that she sold to somebody, didn't quite realize the uh, implications of this family and only found out a little bit later that this puppy is really causing havoc. But their family have three children under five. Not going to work, guys. Puppy is not get, not getting enough attention. The children are upset. The parents are upset. But being a responsible breeder, she is taking back that puppy and will work with it and rehome it into a home that will work. In the long run, the, this family should not have got this dog, this puppy at all. They couldn't cope with it and as it, things just escalated until out of control. So it's very important to do your homework before you decide on getting a puppy. What is your garden? What are your circumstances? And think about children. Small children really can't cope with puppies, particularly the biting of them and the chasing of the children. And little children run around screaming and shouting and then they've got puppies running after them. Disaster. So remember, I always say to people, pros and cons. If you do go ahead with the puppy, it is then time to make the right choice of the right puppy to get. And that's for another time.